Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at the ATF riser from Win and Win. Um, this riser has been on the market for about two years, maybe three. Largely unchanged. It's used by a number of top world archers, and for Win and Win, it's either the top riser or the TFT carbon riser is their top riser. This riser retails in Australia for around 900 Australian dollars and in America around 650 US dollars. It comes in two types. One's an anodized, this is the red anodized finish, or it comes in a paint finish. Now the paint finishes come in two varieties. One being the two-tone finish, this is the black yellow, so this is a painted finish. And most of the ATF is an ATF, is most of the ATF is painted. So and originally the red was painted as well. And there's the blue, it's a very bright, shiny blue, the white. Um, the white looks, the white's got lots of speckles in the paint, it looks really pretty. Now, when I looked at these bows, um, they weigh 1300 grams, which is about the same as all other recurves on the market. Now, you're gonna say, I've been shooting the TFT for a number of years, um, this is their carbon riser, and you're gonna say, well, what's the difference between the ATF and the TFT, the TFT being a carbon and the ATF being the machine riser. Now the theory is the carbon riser absorbs more shock when you shoot it. Now I don't know if that's true or not and that's what this video is going to try and work out. This is a forged machine riser so it's actually poured and then pressed and then machined to make it really strong. The cross pattern matrix here is meant to stop twisting so it's meant to make the riser more stiff. There's a large number of top um, Olympic archers using this as opposed to the TFT. There's still top Olympic archers using the TFT, but a large number shooting this. Now, I thought I would try it out. Um, and some of the things I'm gonna pick up before I actually do the review is I think what's gonna happen, I'm gonna think that the window on the ATF is actually thinner than the TFT. So I'm going to assume that's going to move my um, plunger in and my sight pin in towards the bow more so than the TFT. So I'm going to be interested to see how that how that turns out. With the TFT, my sight pin was out quite a while, quite a way, and when I switched to a different bow, I found the sight pin actually moved further in. So I'm going to be interested to see how this works. I'm interested in the shock of the bow compared to the TFT, um, and just how the overall bow feels. Now in the first pickup of the bow, the grip on the ATF feels narrower than the TFT. It feels, it feels different. And I think, well it's because the carbon riser is actually thicker than the aluminium. But then what happened was, a whole bunch of grips came in for win and win and I was like, I'm just gonna show you the grips. So a whole bunch of grips came in, they're all different heights and different thicknesses and different configurations of your hand. I was like, well, what's this grip for? Which bow does it, which bow does it fit? Because there's nothing on the packaging to tell you what it fits. So I was like, does it fit a TFT? Does it fit an ATF? Which bow does it fit in the win and win range? So one of them did is I actually unscrewed the TFT grip and I unscrewed the ATF, ATF grip and they both fitted in the same. So even though this feels the ATF grip feels thinner. I think it's just because they fit a different grip on the different bows. And I've got a whole bunch of different grips here which I'm gonna try out in a later video. So I thought that was interesting because the grip feel of the grip is very important for when a person comes to buy a bow. The first thing they look at is whether they like the look of it, whether they like the paint, cost, and then they generally feel the grip of the bow to see what feels comfortable. To me, this this feels comfortable, this grip, and it feels better than the TFT, in my opinion, in the actual grip. So I'm going to be interested to set this bow up. Um, that's what we're going to do in the next part of this. We're going to set it up. Um, I'm going to show you how I set, set up a recurve, and then we're going to shoot it and see if I prefer this to the TFT to shoot. And given it's about $200 cheaper, that will be interesting. Now I'm choosing the anodized versus, versus the paint because the anodized is just bulletproof as far as it can't scratch, it can't chip. Um, it's red and I, if you see in my videos I generally stick with red um, so that way all the accessories all fit and match. Um, and I'm just looking at this one, I'm going, 
you can't chip and I think there's a little chip there um, <laughs> so anyway so we're going to build this bow now and um, set it up and have a shot with it okay so we're going to build the ATF riser up and people ask me to do a video basically showing how I build one of these bows as far as how I kit it up um, now as far as price point on this bow 900 how does that compare to the other top of the range risers um, the Hoyt um, FX I think it's called is about 1200 the um, MK top of the range riser is about 1200 the um, Samic riser is actually cheaper um, other brands Fivix is actually cheaper the Titan um, is cheaper than this but this is I think in the money this is not a bad price point for its money so now when you go when you choose limbs it was a question for me which limbs I choose to put on this because I'm going to be shooting these limbs so I'm actually going to try this bow out and see what I think of it and I thought well I thought I'd grab my other win and win limbs but I've actually lent that to, a, to one of my staff to try out he's trying out the TFT version of this bow um, so I thought for this exercise I'll just grab some 60 some 62 sorry some 68 42 pound win and win carbon foam limbs now I haven't found a big difference between carbon foam and normal fiber foam limbs but I thought well these are a heck of a lot cheaper than a thousand dollar limbs so let's just give these a go and my scores weren't really much different between the thousand dollar limbs and the two hundred dollar limbs so um, I'm just going to go with these for the setup. These limbs, um, there's no wood in them, so basically they should be good. The quality of the carbon is obviously not as good as the thousand dollar limbs. The foam's probably not as good, um, but I'm happy for this purpose to go with with these limbs and see how they feel. Now, so I've got the string, fast flight string. Now I'm going 18 strand because I use large groove knocks. Now if I was shooting small groove knocks, I could go for a 16 strand string. But given I shoot 42 pounds, I'd prefer 18 strand. Now if you're shooting light bow poundage, you could go for a lighter, a lighter string, but you still want your knocks to fit on. So if you're going to go for, let's say a 16 strand string and the knocks don't fit, then you've got to reserve the center serving. I find the string thickness doesn't make a big difference as far as speed, so, I'm just going with the 18, but if you're shooting light poundage, you know, let's say you're shooting a 20 pound bow, you're only going to be shooting 20 meters anyway, so whether you shoot 18 strand or 16 strand, this is a fast flight string. Fast flight's are equivalent of about three pounds in speed, so I think it's worth the extra five dollars um, for fast flight as opposed to Dacron. So this is just a win and win fast flight string. now. Look, there's better strings on the market, but I've been shooting the win and win string now for a year and I haven't replaced, I don't think I've replaced the center serving yet. Um, there are better quality center servings than they use here, I'm gonna guess. And that, it's kind of funny because some stuff gets me in trouble and some stuff doesn't. But um, if you're gonna get a custom made string, they generally use Halo in the center serving, which is about 40 something dollars a roll. I'm guessing this is a cheaper material in the center here, but it may not be, um, I just think it is, so. All right, um, so one of the big questions, well, one of the big questions is when you go to an archery shop is how much you want to spend on a kit. And people go, I don't know, just give me something. It's the big question because whether I fit $1,000 limbs or $300 limbs or $100 limbs, this is the choice. And you know, when you're buying a setup, um, whether you've got $200 or $2,000 makes a big difference. Um, now they click on nicely. Um, now I got asked whether the tiller is the same from top and bottom. I think it is, but I'll measure it for this video. Now when you fit a string, there should be a top and a bottom in the loops. The loop which is bigger should be at the top um, and the loop which is the smaller should be at the bottom. Unfortunately in this one they're both the same. So normally the top loop is bigger. So normally the top loop's bigger and down the bottom here where they finish it is down the bottom. So I'm gonna guess this is the top, but for this string they're both identical. So generally the bottom 
bottom is a small groove and the top is the big groove because it slides over the limb like so. You can see I can't slide this right the way down. Um, now the wind wind strings are normally pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to try it the other way. And it happens you know, when I shoot videos I basically just I shoot videos. I don't go and edit it, but this string is not sliding down the way I'd want it to, and that's not normal for win and win. Normally the strings are pretty good, um, but I'm going to have to make do with it. So, yeah, if you paid fifty dollars to have a custom string fitted, well, you'd expect it to be a little bit better, but probably you're going to say, well, win and win make hundreds of strings, and yes, they do. Like it works, you can see it works. There it's just I prefer this to be around a little bit more. But I'm going to string this down. Now use a bow string when you string a bow. If you don't use a bow string, you run the risk of this limb pulling out and actually breaking the little um, pivot in there. Now I've seen two people do that. Or was it one person do it twice? And it's definitely he pulled out his limbs when he was stringing the bow. And when and when did the warranty on it. Um, so, but if you use a bowstring, you just don't have any problems. So I'm going to use a bowstringer. The one I like is this bowstringer here. You have a small one to go on the top and a big one down the bottom. They're about $10. Um, well worth getting. Now, I have broken a recurve um, back when I was young through stringing it through my legs. So, even though there's going to be people in your club who string around their legs, please don't do it. I mean, you know, for the manufacturer who may or may not do the warranty and the shop who may or may not do the warranty, it's just a pain, you know, why avoid it when that takes a second to string a bow with a bow stringer? And it's ten and it's ten dollars for a bow stringer, like just avoid the Okay, so I've got the bow together, I've got the string. Now the first thing I want to check is I want to check the knocks on the string. So I'm gonna grab an arrow. Okay, so the knocks I use, I'm using Biter knocks number twos, um, just symmetrical. Um, I'm just going to show you the click. There is a click. Like the, the arrows do hold on, but they're not... I would like it to be tighter than that, and they, this would probably be okay with a number one knock, and this is a number two. But I'm going to go with that. I would like there to be more tension, so I could either reserve the center or go to number two knocks. Since I'm shooting this video, I'm just going to continue filming this video, and we're going to do this as is. But in an ideal world, um, that serving would be thicker, so you'd have to reserve it or go for a number two knock. Now, if you're shooting a knock where you can't adjust the size because whatever reason um, most knocks do come in two sizes that you can fit and knocks are about well these knocks are $20 a dozen um, but most knocks are around $15 a dozen so it would be cheaper to replace them um, and yeah I, I would prefer that so I would prefer to replace the center serving than replace my knocks so the next time it's correct but okay the arrowrest I've chosen is the Fivix Butterfly Rest, just because I thought it was something different. I haven't used it before. I have used the Toe Point one before, which is just a $10 rest, and that was fine. I've used Stick On Arrowrest, I've used Wrap Around Arrowrest, and honestly, my scores would have been the same with them all. Um, so, now this just pulls off. It's a bit of two-sided tape. It just sticks on the back of the rest. Now when you're selecting your poundage limbs, and I get so many questions on what sort of spined arrow should I choose. And it's always a loaded question for me because I know consumer law in Australia, um, which is probably different to America, okay? Because I'm at the moment I'm having a, I don't know if I'm having a fight or not. Um, consumer law in Australia says if you recommend the wrong product to someone, then basically you're liable. So I'm always really careful with how I word um, when someone rings up and says, what spine should I get for arrows? I'm like, this is my best guess. You've got to try it and see how it goes. Now, with my TFT riser, I was shooting 68, 42 pounds. 
and I did a video which says actually this is a hard draw. Now the, my arrows were perfectly spined for that bow, it being 600 spine, the um, 20 and a half inch draw length, 600 spine. When I went to the Fivix um, Titan limbs, which is still a thousand dollar limbs, I found the draw very smooth to draw back, still 42 pounds. And what I found prior to the Nationals was I shot through paper and I found the arrows were coming out stiff. So I had to crank up the bow to try and get it to shoot the same as the TFT, to shoot the 600 spine arrows. So I would have been better with 700 spine arrows um, with the Titan limbs. But I didn't really have time to swap around, so I just sort of shot them. Um, I did wind up the poundage and it was better but not perfect so how good was it I would have been better with 700s but so when you shoot talking about spine of arrows it depends on the speed it's a bit of trial and error playing around with point weight to get it exact if you're a beginner like you know trial and error again but um, just ask and say look what's your best guess um, but you might have to go one way or the other. I generally find the arrow charts are stiff on the stiff side for a recurve So the arrow chart for me would probably say a 400 and I find 600 works And if I'm shooting slower limbs, it's probably even a 700 and that's just through tuning um, and that's fairly common Right, so I've stuck the I've stuck the arrow rest on, now it goes on the back hole because if you're using a wraparound arrow rest, the front holes to bolt the rest to the, the middle buttons for the plunger button to go on. Now I've chosen the Fivix um, plunger button, you're saying well why are you choosing Fivix for a win and win because I've done my plunger button I've been using has been a win and win and I thought well for this video let's try something new so I'm just trying the um, Fivix, I've tried the AE plunger, I've tried the cartel plunger look they honestly they all do basically the same job and i haven't really found much performance difference between them i like the locking feature this comes with a tool to lock it on the side um so i like that with this particular plunger priced about 70 dollars the fivix butterfly rest is priced around 45 dollars which is more expensive than the Descartes. but i thought well, let's just give it a try for for this the purpose of this video all right so so i put the plunger on the rest and what i find is the little the rest is too high up so i'm going to lower that um and i need an allen key on the back here to to do that now this rest comes with an allen key so we're gonna we're gonna move that down now when you're setting up your bow um just be happy with the choices you make um so for me, you know, if I make a choice to shoot a different arrow rest, as far as a cheaper one, I'm making that choice because I didn't want to spend the extra dollars. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make the arrow sit in the middle of the plunger button. Now this is a bit of a pain because see the arrow just slides up. So it'd be easier if this knock was tied on the string. But I want the arrow to sit in the middle of the plunger button there so currently the way this sits it's sitting high on the plunger so i've got to move this little arm down a little bit um so i haven't adjusted left and right yet and i'll do that next now to adjust the arrow <laughs> my poodle almost just fell off the bench i caught it with one hand whether that makes the video or not so i line up the arrow with the center of the limb bolts the here this tiller bolt here center of the grip and I want basically the arrow straight down the center or slightly to the left so I just look down the arrow and that's looking that's looking pretty amazingly good since I haven't adjusted my plunger but what I do is I move my plunger left or right to make it in the right position but I'm actually pretty happy with that so I'm just going to lock that in place so that was just pure luck you still have to tune it um, now what I want with the arrow rest let's zoom in so with the arrow rest on the plunger I don't I need the tip of the arrow to be right on the edge of that rest which it is which is perfect 
The arrow is just a little bit high still on the plunger, so I'm just going to move that rest down a smidge more. But the left and right's pretty good, so I'm I'm very happy with that. One of the things when you own an archery shop, it's really good to try different products out. Um, that way, when people come and ask you, you you basically have been there and you've tried it, and you can tell them about the product from your experience. If you don't try the product, it's very hard. Well, I mean, you can give an opinion, but it's um, and now that's perfect in the middle. So I'm really happy with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tie on knocking points. Now, originally with knocking points, I used to use brass knocking points. And the reason was it was simple. Okay. Now I've gone away from brass. Um, and I'll tell you the reason why because it marks your finger tab and it pinches the arrow now I haven't found any difference in scores uh, between brass and just tied on knocking points but um, it doesn't mark my tab and I'm liking tying them on so often I'm, I'm tying them for compounds I'm tying them for recurves now and I've basically gone away from the brass knocking points Right, so I take a bit of cord, and the cord I use, this is the BCY knocking point and tying cord. What I like about this, the cord is quite rough, and what I do is I rub it against some hot melt glue. Um, so this is a stick, this is boning glue, but any hot melt glue would work. Anything you get from a hardware store will be absolutely fine. It's just, I own an archery store, and I've got this stuff on the shelf, so I'm like, yeah, I'll use this. And what I do is I'm just rubbing the hot melt glue into, into the string itself. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie, okay, so the problem with tying knocking points in is it's hard to adjust it after you've got them set. So generally I hope, I roll my eyes, I hope that when I do it, when I set up a bow, it's going to be right. And most times it is. I set up a bow yesterday, I spent all day with the guy. <laughs> and we shot through paper and I had this littlest tear. And I was like, yes, and just like a small thing, it's like perfect. And then another guy's in the shooting range trying his bow and he goes, oh, I'll shoot through paper. And it comes through with this massive tear, like the tear's this big. And he shot a hundred shots through his paper and he's got this tear this big. And I'm like, oh God. And he's there trying to play with it and he's not getting anywhere. As I just rub this just telling you a story. Uh, so I've got this glue through here. So what I do is I grab a bow square. Now with a bow square, when you put it on a bow, basically what I think of it, this is the base of the arrow here. This is the base where the base of the arrow sits. So what you want is your knocking point to start just there because you want your arrow to come through, through slightly high. So this is where I'm going to tie the knocking point on. And the way I tie my knocking point so I put the I put the T square on the string like so like there that's a, that's where the arrow is going to sit so I'm going to start tying from that point I'm going to work my way down I'm going to do about three ties um, and then cut it off and burn it off and then I'm going to put the knock on the string and I'm going to tie above the knock to get it nice and you don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose. Now the tie I do is just a half tie. It's the tie you do shoelaces with. And I'll sort of show you what that tie is. So that's the half tie there. It's just the one you do the shoelace with. So I've tied it on the side, now tie it on the opposite side. I tie it on this side, tie it on the opposite side. So you alternate the side you do it on. So I've got my position there. I take the T-square off now and I tie it on one side. I'm moving down the string. And then I swap to the other side. I just do... I, you don't want to do too much, but you don't want to do too little. So you want there to be enough there. So it's actually holding. So that's three ties I've done. Now I also like to alternate the colors. So I'm using a black string here. 
Um, so I'm using a red tie because I like to be able to see where I'm actually knocking my arrows. So if I was using a, you know, red's, red's good unless you, I was on a red serving, then I'd do a black. Um, okay, so that's it. That's it finished. I've done about four. I'm just going to show you how thick that is. Just there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these two bits off here. I'm going to cut them, burn them, and then this this rope is covered in hot melt glue. And then I'm just going to I don't touch the I don't touch the string with the flame. I just have the flame near it, so the so the glue melts into the serving. So I've just burned off one end. I'm just going to show you that. So see there's one left and the other one there. I'm just going to try and zoom in. So there and the other one's there is burnt off. And then so I burn off the second one to get a nice little blob and then I heat up the serving. And that's pretty much it. So continue on the um, bow tuning thing. I know this video is not about bow tuning, but so the guy had his arrow ripping. So so we moved his arrow rest left and right as you do. That's your starting point because his arrow rest was too far in, and really the it didn't fix the it didn't fix the problem. So. So that's it there, just a little bit of glue on it. Done. Now some people don't do it this way and that's, you know, everyone can do it their own way. I just saw someone doing it like this and I was like, oh, that's really clever. So, I mean, do what works for you. If you think there's a better way to do things, do it, do it the way you think to do it. Um, right, what I do now to make life easier, I've just got a bite a knock, it's on a pin. I just pull the knock off. I put the knock on the string. Like so, you can see how loose it is. It's just, I don't like it that loose. Um, I really don't like it that loose. Um, and now I'm going to serve above it to hold it in place. So with the tear, um, what I did then is I, um, I put the bow on a drawboard to check to see if it had any cam lean on top and bottom. The bottom one had a slight bit of cam lean, so what I did is I moved the cam and I moved the cam in the wrong direction, just because I wasn't thinking. Um, that's cool. Um, so then I had to put the pull the cam off again, refit it, and move the cam. I just one spacer, like one thin spacer. I moved it, and that made a huge difference to the tear. Like. You know, it went from that big to that big. Um, so it, it halved the distance, and it was the, the thin paper washer. Um, so then I was like, well, that's weird. Why is it not perfect? Um, it could be I've got to move the cam across further. And I looked at his arrows. He's a tall guy. Um, and he shoots, I think he shoots 45 pounds. His draw length is about 30 and a half. And he was shooting 500 spined arrows, but he had 125 grain screwing point, which is about 150 grains at the front end. And I was like, that's going to be too light. So what I did is I gave him a heavy spined arrow. I gave him a 300 spined arrow. I said, shoot this through paper. And he shot that through paper and it was a perfect bullet hole. Um, I was like, there you are. So it's the spine of the arrow. So the question is then you can either to to make the spine of the arrow correct you could decrease the point weight which will stiffen up the arrow or shorten the arrows or just buy some different arrows um, so what i did is i grabbed some um, 80 grain points we screwed those on so we replaced the 120s with 80s shot that through paper and the tear got down to about that big um, like not as good as a stiffer spined arrow like probably a 400 would have been um but it was such a big difference um
And the thing is, he's actually got the proper arrows at home. He just use he uses these ones for indoor because uh, they were his first arrows and they were a bit thicker. So. Right, so I've got knocking points on. Right, so my next step in, in building the kit is a, as a target site and then stabilizers. Oh, and a clicker also. Right, so that's on. Happy. Um, the knock sits between these two. Crunch. You see the knock sits nicely between those two. There's a little bit of movement, but it's not too bad I'm pretty happy with that right so I've done my RS I've done my plunge button and this is what I do when I'm setting up a bow I'm like I've done my plunger button I've done my RS I've done my knocking points I'm happy with that I'm not happy with the center of the serving so we could go for thinner knocks um, but time constraints I've got to go out to dinner tonight it's late and cold um, so the site now when you're choosing a site it gets back on budget um, how much you want to spend and basically the quality of the site you want um, now for me I've been shooting the win and win um, site for six years um, and it's it's okay like it's an okay site I find it gets jammed a little bit but it's been okay for six years it's a carbon site but this time I'm going to use the EXE and I was going to use a red one to match in with the red theme but this one came in my shop today it was used by a customer and he wasn't happy with it so I'm going to use it um, now the reason why and you're going to ask why he's not happy with it um, we well should ask why he's not happy and I'll, I'm happy to tell you um, So when you choose a site, the more you spend, the better the site gets, um, generally. Um, so your top of the line sites are gonna cost, set you back for a recurve, you know, probably around the four, five hundred dollar mark. Top of the line XL, about 500. But for me, I struggle with that price point. Like I could justify it to myself, but I thought, well, let's give this one a go. Um, it's very similar to a lot of the top of the line sites. I find the movement's very smooth. It's carbon. Um, it's got a quick disconnect, um, which I like. And basically the sites, so Win and Win has got a site around $50 with micro adjustment, which is not a bad site, but I find that site does come loose. Um, the Decut site at about $100 isn't bad. It's got micro adjustment. Uh, Win and Win's got a whole bunch at you know, $130, $200, which aren't bad. But I really like this site. So I thought, well, since the guy returned it, let's give this one a go. Um, okay, so here it is here. Now I'm gonna show you what he didn't, what he had the issue with. So this is a site here. Now I like a different point because you can see if I'm aiming this, you can see already this point starts to disappear. I like an aperture on there and I'm going to do a whole video about apertures for recurves. But for this purpose, I'm just going to shoot this as is. So the thing you didn't like about it, there's little bushings inside here, which it runs in. So I guess he owned the site for probably six months before he returned it, maybe four months. There's a little Teflon bushing in there and it's actually screwed into this metal housing here. Here's finding that little bushing was working its way out. And I'll just show you on the end here. Zoom in. See there's a little, um, there's a little screwdriver there. If you screw those, because this little bushing, these little bushings were so tight on the Teflon, if you screw that, it screwed the Teflon in or out. So what I've done is I've basically put some WD-40, a lubricant on these tracks here. So that Teflon now, now, um, slides easy and I think that will fix the problem. You could have applied glue to the Teflon inside the barrel um, but that's all what I did. I like this because it detaches. It's a nice sight so I was like well I sell these things let's try it. Um, let's see if it comes loose. Let's see how it is. Alright so now when I set up a sight on the bow I look down the I look down the arrow, so straight down the arrow. I want the sight slightly on the left hand side of the arrow because that's where it's going to land. That's where it is. I'm going to shoot this up close, so let's just move it towards the top. 
I'm pretty happy with that. Now when it comes to stabilizers, um, I've got a red set of Win and Wins that I've been shooting before. Um, which are about $500 stabilizers, they're wireless. Um, I was shooting on my Fivix bow, these toe point set, which are about a hundred bucks for a set of stabilizers. And they have been so popular in the last week, I literally sold out. I sold 20, 15 sets of them in the last week. Um, and I, I'm gonna show you the difference. So I'm gonna show you the difference in the stabilizer and this is purely on looks and viewers are going to say looks mean nothing. I'm going to tell you when I have customers in the shop and we always go, oh, looks, looks mean nothing. Um, my shop was full of customers yesterday and people were picking out the colors of their bows, the color of their fletchings, the colors of their strings. It's all about looks for customers. Me, I don't really care that much, right? But for customers, especially target archers, it's all about the look and the feel of the product. It's, just as it looks blingy. Um, hunters care less, but some hunters are really into the camouflages and which camouflages and making sure the camouflages match. But target archers generally look, want stuff to look nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both sets of stabilizers and show you. Um, and I think I'm actually going to fit the toe point because I think it looks cool. And I think it goes with the whole red and black theme that I'm running here. So let's just go and grab those. Okay, so when it comes to stabilizers, this is the Wirewood stabilizer here. I've shot this for a number of years, probably worth around $300. Good stabilizer, but I don't think the red goes with the red of this bow. Um, you can say, well, why wouldn't you shoot it and all that? I'm going to show you these other ones. Now, I actually sold out of the reds. Um, I have no more reds left, so I'm going to have to get them. But this is, this is them, and I think... This just goes really well with the bow. So I'm gonna go for this set. Now this set of stabilizers is gonna set you back about $130. Um, and you'll see I did a video, my green set I, I had or have, um, basically the this bolt here came out. Um, so this is the extender. The extender just moves the weight forward on the stabilizers. Now, you're going to say, well, you, you're buying a $900 riser, do you want, you know, why would you put a cheap set of stabilizers on? People, generally my customers are on a budget and they may fork out $900 for a riser and they might go with cheaper limbs to start with because they've got to build themselves up. So it's not abnormal for someone to buy a $900 riser and fit $200 limbs or $100 limbs and then build themselves up to better quality limbs. That's more than common. Um, I think I just put that one back to front. <laughs> um, so the concept of going for cheaper stabilizers rather than expensive ones, honestly, that would be the majority of my sales as far as if a person came in for this bow I do sell more expensive stabilizers. I mean, the whole wall behind me is all the expensive stabilizers I have. Um, but the majority of people are beginners and they won't want to fork out $600 on a set of stabilizers. Um, the only people who are going to be forking out $600 on stabilizers are going to be people who are really into it and it'll be like a present or they would have achieved a certain result and they'll be shouting themselves or it's tax time, they've already got expensive bow and I like, what else can I buy for myself? Um, I just think the red and black on these stabilizers looks good. Um, yeah, I think it looks good. And tell me what you think. But I think, I think colors and the way a bow looks is, is going to become a big thing if it's not already like you know XL's already got their colored sights on the market um, I think stabilizers there's not a lot of colors and the market with stabilizers and I saw a company in America was doing colored stabilizers and I thought 
There's only one stabilizer company I saw in America doing color and I was like, that's a good idea, but I've got so many stabilizers behind me. I was like, yeah, I really don't want another company unless it was high demand for me. Because once again, you don't sell many $300 stabilizers. Okay, so that's the red set there. And I just think, for me, just gonna move this around. I think that, I think this red here pops. Um, I think it looks good, and you're probably gonna say it's a bit weird having a top of the line Olympic riser with cheap stabilizers, and yeah, maybe, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, it was interesting, so I'm gonna go back on selecting this bow. So when you select a bow, recurve bow, you might be selecting on price, you might be selecting on the look, you might be selecting on how the grip feels. Now, I, the, one of my staff who works here, I gave him this bow to shoot, and he didn't like the grip on it. And he took it away, and the win and win grips came in, and you, you saw at the start of this video, the different grips, and I gave him the different ones to try, and I said, oh, how'd you find them? And he said, I really like this high grip one. And he said, I just find it makes the bow feel really good. He said, it feels kind of like the Fivix grip, but a little bit different. Um, and I said, does it help your shooting? He said, yeah, it does. Now, he hasn't actually shot scores with it, so I don't know if it has or whether it's in his mind or whether it just feels better. But I find the grip really does it does have an impact as far as whether it makes you feel better and whether it makes you feel comfortable. So I'm interested to see how I find this grip um, in the shot. Now the last thing I've got to add is a clicker. Clicker. Now the clickers I like, I like the win and win carbon clickers just because I think it looks cool. Um, now they are expensive, they're around $45 for a, for a clicker compared to the biter clicker which is $15, you've got some magnetic clickers out there. But I really like the win and win metal carbon clicker, so I'm going to go with one of those. Um, I just think it looks nice. Um, once again, on looks. So we're going to put that on, and then we're going to shoot this and see how it performs. I got a. So this is the clicker I'm going for. It's a wireless carbon clicker. Um, now I find this little thing may come off in time, um, but I just like the look of it. It's It's, you know, the Bite Clicker is, is, is a lot more popular than this clicker. I just like the look of it. Um, now, like I said, that little metal thing can come off, so you can glue it back on. I never did. Um, right, this little, this little thing here, so the little black thing, that comes off. Oh, under it's black. Now, at the end of this, oh, the end of the little clicker thing, there's a hole. So I'm actually going to mount the rest of the clicker extender on there. That will be in the box. And then we're ready to shoot this and see what I think of it. Okay, so that's what the extender looks like. And I'm just going to screw that onto the end. Pretty excited to have a shot. Um, I'm very happy with the way this bow looks. Um, I'm happy with the way it feels. I haven't shot it yet, but I'm... I'm really liking the white grip and the white limbs and yeah I'm liking it so let's go and have a shot and see what I think of it. Yeah so I'm here in the shooting range and I'm going to take my first shot with the bow. Now the first thing is you want to get the clicker position right and you're going to say for a beginner do you shoot with a clicker? I don't shoot with a clicker as for beginners I get them started with just getting comfortable in the whole shooting the bow getting the anchor point right but after you've been shooting for a while and the question is how long? A few weeks, probably two or three weeks, and you're comfortable in how things are, that's when you apply a clicker because it gets your draw length consistent and gets you pulling through the shot. Um, people are gonna ask, well, for beginners, do I shoot with, um, do I recommend stabilizers? I do because I, you want that bow feeling how it feels in the shot. So things I'm interested in here, see I've got no arm guard on. With the Fivix bow that I've been shooting, it hasn't been hitting my arm. The PSE didn't hit my arm, but the TFT did. So I'm interested to see if this will hit my arm. Um, I'm just interested to see how the bow feels. I'm interested in how the grip feels. 
This is the first time drawing it back. So I want to get that clicker position correct. So I'm not going to shoot the first shot. I'm just going to see when the clicker goes off. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's funny um, it's funny because when I hear the click I wasn't going to shoot that shot and as soon as I heard the click I went oh I've got to let go <laughs> even though my brain's going don't let go don't let go um, which is going to bring me to a funny story the guy was um, checking out his clicker at home and he's drawing back his bow and you know where this is going don't you um it wasn't me by the way it was one of my customers he's checking his clicker position at home in his lounge room and it went click and he just went just did that and shot an arrow straight in the wall of his house i love my customer stories so i didn't actually get a whole feel of how that bow felt um it definitely didn't hit my arm so that's a good thing So it's not hitting my arm. So good outcome there. Because um, I don't particularly like bows whacking my arm. I like the way the bow feels as far as the... I like the way the grip feels. The grip feels to me better than the TFT. Um, actually, I like the grip better on this than the Fivix that I've been shooting. Now, I like the Fivix and I'm happy I tried the Fivix because it's a nice high grip. Uh, but this grip to me, I really like the feel of. Now the vibration's interesting. So I'm going to say with win and win, they say the carbon riser absorbs more shock than the, than this riser. That's not what I'm feeling. I'm feeling less vibration with this bow than I did with the TFT. Yeah, it could be the stabilizers. Maybe it's these stabilizers because they have their rubber dampeners on it. Um, once again, these are cheap stabilizers. These stabilizers are only $130 for the set. Um, but it feels, feels good. Um, feels really good do you know why like when i do reviews on on stuff i'm always really scared to do a review on a hoyt because if i do a review on a hoyt and i say anything bad i just get literally death threats and i'm not joking on that um or if i say look i'd like there to be a bigger draw length adjustment i just get hounded with comments about you know how biased i am but when you first try something, you either like it or you don't, sometimes it grows on you. Like the first time I shot the Focus, I was like, this is going to be junk. And you can see my video on that. And I really liked it. And I've been shooting it for a year since. I didn't, I've had this bow in my shop for two years. I've never shot this bow. Um, this is the first, you've just witnessed the first time I've ever shot this bow. And it's been in my shop for two, two three years. Um... I really like this bow. This this is the nicest recurve I have shot. Um, it's there's no vibration. The shots click crisp. It's it's great. I love it. Um, I really like it. Um, I'm almost wishing now I put the thousand dollar limbs on. That will just. Really, really liking this bow. Um, okay, so I want to just run through the other bows I've shot in my past as far as recaps I've shot. The Samic Ultra, love the bow, love the grip. A very popular bow, won many a gold medals in the Olympics with that bow. Not me, I'm saying that bow won Olympic gold medals. Great bow to shoot. Love that bow. That was 25 years ago, love that bow. Um, I then shot the SF Forged bow. I think that's a very good, you know, win and win forged. Um, and now called the Motive, same bow. Good bow to shoot, good price point, about 350. 
not a big fan of the grip and definitely if you've got that bow I would replace the grip um, on the bow. I did feel a little bit of shock through that bow compared to this. Um, once again, maybe the stabilizer may not be, but I can feel it straight off. I then shot, um, I shot the um, Win, Win and Win CXTs. Now I found those grips a little bit wide. And then I went to the PSE X Appeal. Now I didn't like that bow when I first got it, but what I liked about it, it didn't hit my grip and I eventually got used to the grip on that bow and I shot that thing pretty well. Um, I then went to the TFT because I thought that was an awesome looking bow, the carbon finish and really loved the whole look of that, the carbon stabilizers, loved the whole look of that bow. Um, it was fast too, like really fast. I love the Velator that I've just been shooting, but this bow, this is the best recurve I've shot. Um, And I probably should have picked up on it. I should have picked up on this bow before because there are so many Olympians shooting this bow, the ATF. Sure, there's Olympians shooting the TFT, right? There are, you know, there are Olympians shooting the TFT. Goal, I'm pretty sure the gold medal in the last Olympics was one with the TFT in the ladies division. But the vast majority of them, the gold medalist was shooting this, the a ATF. ATF. Um, it's this. This is good. It's really, really good. Um, I'm pretty sure he shot the gold. If not, he was number one qualifier. Anyway, the the win and win shooter, Kim Bao, was shooting this. Um, I'm sure that's his name, Kim Bao. Anyway. And you always think, why would they be shooting a cheaper riser if Win and Win give them whatever choice they want? And I saw Katrina Lorick, I think her name is Lorick, God, I hope that's right, the American Olympic archer. She's sponsored by Win and Win. She laid down all the stuff Win and Win and gave her, and I was like, she's got more stuff than my shop's got, and I've got a whole bunch of Win and Win stuff. And she's shooting this bow, and I'm like, this is good. I love the feel, I love the way it comes out of the hand, the vibration stops, the sight pin's not too far out, I found the sight pin too far out on the TFT, it's not whacking my arm, there's no marks there at all, um, I think I'm done, this is, and I'm happy with this setup, I'm wishing I changed the centre serving now to make it a little bit thicker. Now I think one of my friends is an ex-Olympian. Well, I've got many ex-friends ex who are Olympians, but one of them said to me, they said they're, um, I literally do, um, said this string here should be an alternate color to the sight window so you can see the string down the sight window. I thought that was interesting. Um, so maybe I'll make another string and maybe I'll make a white string so it, um, I mean, what he was saying to me was he shoot. He used to shoot white risers and then black strings. I'm pretty sure he's probably going to quote me wrong on this. White risers and black strings, so he can put the black string of the down the um, white of the riser. Now I'm using red just because oh, I try and stick to red for stuff, so I can take all the sights off. Um, so maybe I'll make a white string. Maybe I'll put a red pinstripe through it. great love it um often when i do reviews i did review on a back tension release as soon as i got it i just loved it um love it so af atf this is the next bow i'm shooting um happy i put the butterfly rest on because i like that i'm happy with the clicker and the sight is interesting like there's nothing moved on the site so i'm happy with that stabilizer obviously haven't fallen apart so that's good i'm pretty happy with all that so now it's just shoot lots and lots of arrows before some championships and try and build up the strength. I'm going to paper tune these arrows to see how they go with these limbs because these limbs, compared to the wireless limbs I was shooting, the 42 pounds, these limbs feel soft. 
I'm going to say they feel very similar to the Fibix limbs, which were $900, um, which were 42 pounds. Um, these limbs feel that easy for me to pull through. Like, that easy to pull through. Like, they feel light. I could definitely be up in poundage with these. I could be, you know, 44, 46, no problem at all. So I may change the limbs. I'll probably stick with them and just shoot lots of arrows. And I'll shoot some scores. So I think what I'll do in the coming weeks, I'll do another video to see how I've progressed with this, see what sort of scores I've shot with this bow. I think I'm going to shoot this bow well. Um, now, with all the bows I've shot, all those bows I've shot, I've shot similar scores with all of them. Um, my personal best score has been with the X Appeal, I'm pretty sure, but I've shot some good scores in my backyard with all of those bows. Um, but I'm pretty sure my best score was, was with an X Appeal, but I'm like one or two points off. Um, I think I'll do it with this bow, it just feels great. I like, just love it. Anyway, when you're trying out a bow in a shop, if the shop owner will let you have a shot, um, it, it's well worth doing. Some shops won't let you shoot because it's just a waste of their time and then the bow's second hand. But if they do let you have a shot, it's well worth doing. Um, I've got many people who spend a day in my shop coming in and they'll just go, okay, I'll try this, I'll try that. And they just come in and get their stuff set up and they go through the whole setup process, which you know may take two hours, may take, may take the day. Um, so they literally take a day off work, they'd have a wreck day or a sick day or a flex day, and they set themselves up. Um, but this is, this is good. I don't think it looks as flashy as maybe the MK um, Archery Riser, probably doesn't look as good as the um, Fivix Riser. I found the Vivix riser a little, the Fivix um, Titan riser a little bit wide, the grip. This just suited me down pat. So, and I'll probably do some testing with the other win and win grips to see how I, how I find those. But this is ATF. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So I'm happy with that. I'd be interested to see how this compares against some of the other top of the line win and win risers that win and win have had before and won gold medals with, like the Win X and some before those because I haven't actually shot those either so but this is nice this is yeah this is good so happy with this the grip feels comfortable I found the high grip on the Fivix was actually cutting into my hand a little bit after a while I mean it was okay but I could feel the pressure this just nothing it's just great so happy with that that's the ATF from win and win the more you shoot, the better you're going to shoot. And even if you spend, you know, the thousand dollars on the bow, don't expect your scores to increase by much because it gets down to practice. You've got to put the time in. So with that, I hope you have a great night and all the best with your archery. And with that, I better go and do the dinner date. Have a nice night. Thanks for watching. Bye.